In this video, we're going to look at De Moivre's theorem. It states if we have cos theta plus i sine theta to the power of n, this is equal to cos n theta plus i sine n theta. If you want to lodge that in your brain, please do. If not, write it down. You will be expected to remember and use it. So cos theta plus i sine theta to the power of n is equal to cos n theta plus i sine n theta. Now, we're going to uh, prove this using uh, mathematical induction for positive integer. So when n is a positive integer. It doesn't only hold true for positive integers, but we can use mathematical induction to show that it does. So what we'll do, we'll start off and we'll take n equal to 1. If that's the case, what we're going to have now is cos theta plus i sine theta to the power of 1 is going to be equal to cos of 1 lot of theta plus i sine of 1 lot of theta. And quite clearly we can see that this holds true when n is equal to 1. We can just rewrite this now as cos theta plus i sine theta. Okay, And that's going to be equal to cos theta plus i sine theta. So you can see that now, let's write sine correctly, uh, sine theta, you can see that holds true for n equals 1. Our inductive step now is to assume that it holds true for n equals k, where k is a positive integer. So our induction will say now, assume, we've shown it holds true for n equals 1, assume true for k, and k, remember, is a positive integer. So what we can now write is n is equal to k. Okay, so let's now uh, show this. And what we've got then is cos theta plus i sine theta to the power of k will be equal to cos k theta plus i sine k theta. Okay, so that's done. If true for n equals k, it will be true for the next positive integer, n equals k plus 1. So we're assuming true for n equals k, therefore will be true for next integer, and that is going to be n is equal to k plus 1. So what we can now do is write this as cos theta plus i sine theta to the power of k plus 1 will be equal to cos k plus 1 multiplied by theta plus i sine of k plus 1 multiplied by theta. So we've assumed true for k, um, n equals k, we assume true for n equals k plus 1. So what we'll do now is just take a, let's just take a look at what we've got here. Now, if this is true, and we've assumed that as it works for one before, what we're going to now do is the following. We're going to rewrite this part using rules of indices. And we can write this now as cos theta plus i sine theta to the power of k multiplied now by cos theta plus i sine theta to the power of 1. Okay, that's just using rules of indices. That's fairly straightforward. So let's have a look at what we've got here. We've got cos k theta multiplied by cos theta plus i sine theta. So cos, cos theta plus i sine theta to k multiplied by cos theta plus i sine theta to the first power. If we just look right here, we've already shown that cos theta plus i sine theta to the power of k is cos k theta plus i sine theta. We've shown to the first power that it is just cos theta plus i sine theta. So what I'm going to do now is actually rewrite this using our assumption here. And I'm going to say that this is going to be cos k theta. And then we've got plus i sine k theta. And we're going to be multiplying this now by cos theta plus i sine theta. We, we're now going to deal with this. And there's a bit of a cop-out in terms of some of the proof by induction. We learned in a couple of videos back when you multiply complex numbers, you add the arguments. But for me, we want to be a bit more sort of rigorous in this approach. So when you multiply, you could say, well, we're going to multiply these and just add the arguments. For me, that's, that's just a little cheap. So what we're going to do is actually expand this out. So if I expand it out, what I'm going to have now is cos k theta multiplied by cos theta. That's the first multiplied by the first. 
Then if I multiply this one now by the i sine theta, what I'm going to have now is the following. I'm going to have plus, and we're going to have i multiplied by cos k theta, and then we're going to have sine theta. If I now multiply the, uh, these two inner terms, we're going to have now plus i, and then I'm going to have sine of k theta multiplied by cos theta. And then finally, we've got i sine k theta multiplied by i sine theta. Remember, i times i is i squared. i squared is negative 1, so this becomes negative sine k theta sine theta. And you're probably thinking, well, what? Why don't we just go for the idea of if you multiply complex numbers, you add the arguments. As stated, that is just a little flimsy for me. What I'm going to do is just collect up some terms. If I collect up these two, and then I collect up, let's collect up a couple of others. Let's get that. And what we'll do, we'll collect up that one, and we will collect up that one. Now, let's cast our mind back to when we started looking at trig identities. When we looked at the following, we looked at the um, addition formula. So when we had cos A plus B, when we expanded this, we had cos A, cos B, minus sine A, sine B. When we had the sine of A plus B, what we had then was sine A, cos B, plus cos a sine b. Let's just take a look what I've done. I split this into two. We can see here that in the, the square, the rectangles, uh, they're not squares, are they? We've got cos k theta, cos theta, minus, and this is going to give us, uh, apologies, I, um, I should really explain what I'm doing. Now this is going to be sine uh, k theta, sine theta. If we look at this now and fit it in with what we've got just here, then we know cos A plus B is cos A cos B minus sine A sine B. So quite clearly we can say that A would be equal to K theta and B is going to be equal to theta. You can see how that matches up. You don't have to go through this rigmarole. Once you get to this stage, it's perfectly fine to, to state what we've got here. But I'm showing you how this is working. So cos k theta cos theta. So if we just add a and b, k theta plus theta, common factor of theta, we can have k plus 1 multiplied by theta. So what we could actually do now is write this as, and um, this is equal to cos of k plus 1 multiplied by theta. Now, let's consider this bit right here. If we think what we've got here now is i cos k theta sine k theta plus i sine k theta cos k theta. So if I rewrite that, what I've got is i sine k theta cos theta plus i cos k theta sine theta and you can see yet again that falls in with the idea that a is k theta and b is theta so we can write this now as i sine of k plus one multiplied by theta so we can now see that the following we can say that cos theta plus i sine theta based on our assumptive uh our, uh, assumptive step k plus 1 is going to be equal now to cos of k plus 1 multiplied by theta plus i sine of k plus 1 multiplied by theta. And by um, we can simply say and conclude our proof by induction by saying holds true for n equals 1. Assume it holds true for n equals k, where, air, uh, where k is a positive integer. If it holds true for n equals k, it will hold true for the next integer, k plus 1. We've shown that we can express now n uh, cos theta plus i sine theta to the uh, power of k plus 1 in this form. We then relied on our assumptive step here. We've expanded it out and we've used the trig identity and collected it all up at the end. You won't need to go for this rigmarole. Once you state that, you can quite clearly rely. If you're asked to prove it, once you get to that stage, it's quite clear what's going to happen. So we can see that cos theta plus i sine theta to the power of k plus 1 is cos k plus 1 theta plus i sine k plus 1 theta. As stated, I don't like the approach of just saying, well, won't you multiply 
complex numbers add for your arguments. I think that we need to focus on this. So there we go. That's showing it for um, a, a positive integer. You can show it for a negative integer, and it's really quite straightforward. We may go on to look at that, but the main scope of this is the actual application of it. So in the next few videos, we'll start looking at the application. But if you're going to take anything away from that video, take the following. If we have the following, if we've got this, so if we've got this scenario, this is equal to the one on the right. And also, so that's equal to that one. And just to give you a bit of a heads up, you might also see it in the form. Often it's written in books as the following. If you've got R cos theta plus I sine theta to the power of N, that is going to be equal now to R to the N cos, and let's put this in, cos N theta plus I sine n theta. This is just incorporating now the modulus. Just be aware that you might see it in this form, but essentially um, you should appreciate the following thing, that these are now equal. So there we go, bit of proof. You don't need to really know that unless you, I doubt you'll be asked to prove it, um, but that is for positive integer by induction.